you know, in 79, when I did the cover, I, I learned, heard very quickly, this is a great album. But how the next 30 years was going to play out, one couldn't know. Peter Saville is deemed one of the most popular British graphic designers and art directors of the generation. He gained popularity by designing several record sleeves for Factory Records during the late 1970s and 80s. Peter's most notable cover designs include, but most certainly are not limited to, Joy Division's Unknown Pleasures, New Order's Power Corruption and Lies, and Roxy Music's Avalon album cover. From the beginning, Peter has always been one with the arts. He was constantly painting or being creative throughout his earlier school days. In an interview, Saville discussed that his teacher took notice of his art and encouraged him to go into graphic design. To him, this meant he could have a professional job doing what he loved. This resonated with me as I had the same experience when being introduced to the graphic design industry. Peter explained that the only visually interesting information he received being in Manchester in the mid-70s was the record sleeves. This was the beginning of Peter's interest in album cover design. From 1975 to 1978, Peter went on to study graphic design at Manchester Polytechnic. The start of Savile's flourishing music design career took off once he met with famous record label owner, presenter, and journalist, Tony Wilson. This meeting resulted with Peter being commissioned to design the first Factory Records poster. From this point on, Savile had a big name in the design industry. A huge inspiration for Peter's interest in album graphics starts with the Kraftwerk Audubon album cover design. The Audubon album was actually the first album Peter bought with his own money. Prior to that, he relied on hand-me-downs from his older brothers. This cover entices Savile with its extremely minimal design, opening Peter's mind to the world of semiotics and the visual communication translated through such designs. Savile's work is characterized by its minimalist, modernist aesthetic, and its ability to capture the essence of the music it represents. While some of Peter's designs constitute a certain aesthetic, its most exciting aspect is the diversity. This diversity speaks to his ability to approach each project conceptually rather than with a preconceived notion of the final design. When designing the cover of Joy Division's first album, Unknown Pleasures, Peter explains that most bands already have an idea of how they want their first album cover to look. In this case, the band handed Peter the Cambridge Encyclopedia of Astronomy, turned to a page showcasing a graphic of radio emissions from a pulsar deep in space. This was the first and only time the band gave Peter something they wanted as the design. When this concept was proposed to Peter, he thought it was genius and he made an absolutely iconic symbol that would age beautifully over the next 30 years and more. Savile took the design and made it the center of the album cover. He inversed the colors to be white on black and added a lot of negative space with a large black frame. This design perfectly captures the album's name and essence of unknown pleasures. As Peter explains, he sought it to be this enigmatic black thing that more perfectly conveys the album's title. Peter's design for unknown pleasures is cited as his most successful and overall popular design. In an interview, Peter said there is without a doubt a global cult around this album and more specifically the cover image. He goes on to explain the wide variety of the use of this design being seen as tattoos, clothing, and even the soles of shoes. Peter's design alone has become the face of Joy Division. Another design Peter Saville is extremely known for would be his take on the New Order, Power, Corruption, and Lies album cover. This design came to Peter as he was exploring the National Gallery. He was originally looking for inspiration of a prince, however, Savile noticed a postcard that exhibited the painting, A Basket of Roses, by the French artist Henri Fenty Latour. This painting stuck out to Peter in a seductive way, perfectly conveying the meaning of the album. He said the flower's aesthetic was perceived in a way in which power, corruption, and lies infiltrate our lives. Peter took his own direction of the design concept, rather than trying to represent the music in a more literal sense. After a lot of negotiation and tactics, Peter was eventually able to use the image as the album design. On the top right side of the cover, Peter added color blocks as a code that the back of the album would solve. For the back cover, Savile converted the alphabet into a coded color wheel. Once solved, it's clear that Peter's code and design spell out the album title, Power, Corruption, and Lies. This impressive concept was inspired by Peter's understanding of floppy disks containing coded information. This inspiration was also used for Peter's design for the New Order's Blue Monday album cover. 
being a fan of the band himself, it was an extremely rewarding experience for Savile when he designed the last album produced by Roxy Music, Avalon. For this cover, Peters displays one of the band members' soon-to-be wife wearing a medieval helmet, looking out at a lake in Ireland with a falcon perched on her gloved hand. Peters' concept for this cover revolved around King Arthur's last journey to the mysterious land of Avalon. This concept was certainly fitting as it was the band's final album before they went their separate ways. Peter Savile was known for being extremely experimental and always going against the grain. If told not to do something or given restrictions, it is more than likely that Peter will do just the opposite. The man himself once said, There isn't anything at all that I do that I don't want to do. This quote of Savile's perfectly explains the genius behind him and his designs. A more recent design of Peter's is his interpretation of the Lacoste Crocodile logo for their 80th anniversary holiday collector pillow shirts. For this project, the company told Savile to do anything he wanted but to not touch the crocodile, so he did just that. In Peter's own words, he destroyed the crocodile and digitally shattered it in 80 different ways. Peter's reasoning behind wanting to destroy the logo was because of the overwhelming brand obsession. The way people talk about brands led Peter to question the fact that people would buy anything with a logo. This design is definitely one of my favorites from Savile. I love the fact that he was experimental and unconventionally disobedient. This is overall the reasoning behind me choosing Peter Savile as my designer. His work is unconventionally legendary.